Chrysler Gary Heflin says used car price. Wake up to the word. Share an uplifting hour with grace and glory and Baltimore's faithful. Well, good morning and welcome once again to Baltimore's number one gospel program. We've been doing this for quite a while and it's because of you that we can say that. We thank you as we've embraced the new year, a few Sundays into the new year and excited as always to inspire and encourage and empower you. And I'm equally excited because our guest today is someone who is dear and near to me, Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis from you, RLD Absolutely. Ministry. <laughs> How are you? I am blessed because uh, you're here with us today. Amen. First and foremost, a uh, happy new year to you. Thank you, and same to you. And uh, how's you. things been since the last time we chatted? It's been excellent. The Lord's been good. I refuse to complain because it would offend God. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now, listen, I understand there are some exciting things uh, from RLD Ministries yes, on the horizon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're going to be telling us about it, right? I, I look forward to I'm it. I'm chomping at the yeah. bit because you always, when, <laughs> when, when God moves you, it's always something that's a benefit and a blessing to the body of Christ. This is a clarion call that I feel in my spirit right now to respond to something the Lord has given me in my spirit to do for senior leaders. Awesome. Uh, coming up in February. In February? Yes, sir. Well, I can't wait. Coming up, we're going to get more information about it. But right now, let's make our way to our first spoken word. Bishop Dante Hickman awaits us over at Southern Baptist Church. Enjoy the word and then make your way back here so that we can talk with uh, Archbishop Dennis right here on Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman, Sr. By the time of our text, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus sees a man who was born blind. The man was obviously living his best life and minding his own business when the Lord takes note of him. Unlike most people who came or were brought to Jesus for healing and restoration, this man was not in pursuit of a miracle. It appears that he had learned to live with and beyond his disability. But little did he know that the Lord saw him. And I need to park here parenthetically to tell you that the Lord sees you. He sees you in your struggle. He sees you in your faithfulness. He sees you in your worship. He sees you in your tears. He sees you in your worries. The Lord sees you. Even when you can't see him, he can see you. And the text lets us know that he not only sees you, but he's actually looking for you. And in God's timing, the Lord will show up and he will bless you beyond your expectation. Nevertheless, just like Jesus saw him, the Bible says that his disciples saw him too. But when they saw him, they didn't see him the same way that Jesus saw him. Jesus looked at him with joy, but the disciples looked at him with judgment. This is why they asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? They didn't come asking how he could be cured. They came wanting to know how he got in that condition. And unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, that's how a lot of church people are. They're not concerned about your brokenness as much as they want to be in your business. In fact, that's how you can tell the difference between a Christian and a church person. Christians are positive. Christians are praying for you. Christians are pushing for you to succeed, while church people thrive on being negative. Church people thrive on being nosy. And church people thrive on being negligent on your behalf. So the Bible says that the natural reaction of the disciples in this phase of their development was to minimize this man and make his condition his fault. That's what they were looking for in the first place. They were looking for his faults rather than looking to intercede for God's favor in his life. But can I ask you a favor this year? 
in this next season, I need intercession more than I need interrogation. I don't need nobody questioning what's wrong. I, I don't need nobody questioning what happened. I don't need nobody questioning how did it end up like that. No, I need intercessors who intercessors who will pray for me and ask God to bless me. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, you want to pray, ask God to bless me. Ask God to heal me. Ask God to help me. Ask God to liberate me and ask God to promote me. Nevertheless, the Bible says that Jesus was focused on the favor of God that was about to be manifested through this blind man's healing and restoration. Because when God has you in his mind and when God has you on his agenda, nothing and nobody can stop what he's going to do in your life. And what God is about to do in your life, children, is going to be big. What God is about to do in your life is going to be worldwide. What God is about to do in your life is going to be universal and it's going to blow your mind. And when I consider this man in our text who was born blind, it was a blessing enough that he survived. I mean, all of his life, he's no longer a boy, Strickland, he's a man, but all of his life with his condition, he survived. He was a beggar by trade because he could not get a job, but he still made it with food on his table every day, he survived. And I don't need to talk about him, I can tell your testimony, because every day this year has not been a good day. Every day the ground has not always risen to your feet and the wind has not always been at your back. But if you can thank God for anything that has taken place this year, you ought to thank him that you survived. In fact, I got time enough for you to give God some praise that God enabled you to survive some stuff you never thought you were going to get through. Somebody shout, I'm a survivor tonight. Somebody shout, it almost killed me, but I made it. Somebody ought to testify, it almost took me out. It almost stole my, stole my joy. But I'm here tonight with a shout of a survivor. Well, hold up. Wait a minute. God sent me tonight to tell you that you have survived long enough. Yes, he said he saw you and you've been faithful over a few things. He said, Dante, tell them I saw them. They did not get weary in their well-doing. They, they fought a good fight. They kept the faith and they finished their course. And now it's their season to see what they've been missing. Oh, my God. All his life. He had, been, he had been blind and he didn't even know what he was missing. He was just grateful to get a hand out. He was just grateful to eat every day. But somebody ought to lift up your hands and shout, I'm about to see something that I've never seen. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why the enemy is restless in your life. Maybe that's why the enemy is asking questions about you right now. Maybe that's why the enemy is whispering about you amongst your family, amongst your friends, and amongst your colleagues because the enemy can see what you can't see that's about to happen for you. See, if you could see what God was up to in your life, you would be shouting right now. You would be saying, Dante, shut up, stop preaching. I just got a revelation about what God is going to do in my life. But somebody here tonight that the devil's been on your trail. You don't know why you've been catching all this hell. God sent me on the last night of the year to tell you the devil in hell is mad because God is about to do something big. They can't. They, they see what's about to happen for you. But what people don't see is that your blessing is not merely about you. 
but it's about what God wants to manifest for the kingdom through you. Oh, help me preach right here. Because if we're not careful, we can miss our blessing trying to mess up somebody else's blessing. You ain't got to hate on somebody else for what God is doing in their life. You ain't got to be jealous and envious of somebody else for what God is doing in their life. So what you know that they don't dot every I and cross every T. You are not God. You did not decide to bestow upon them grace, mercy, and favor. And I stopped by to tell you that God is not just blessing them, but he's going to bless you through them. Joseph's brothers can testify. They tried to kill Joseph because they were jealous of his favor that eventually blessed them with favor in a famine. All I'm trying to tell you, Southern, is don't hate, celebrate, and learn how to congratulate so that one day you can participate. Preach, Dante, preach. I'm doing the best I can. Nevertheless, my dear brothers and sisters, and I'm almost done, this man, after all this time, was still on track for his miracle. And I don't care how long it has taken for you to get where you are. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how hard life has been for you. You are still on track for your miracle. I need three people to tap somebody else and tell them you're still on track for your miracle. Come on, you ain't preaching. I said, look down your row and tell them you're still on track. You might be 50, you might be 60, you might be divorced for the second time, you may have lost three jobs, your business may have folded, but God sent me by here to tell you that you're still on track for your miracle. Now, now listen, Southern, I'm preaching this sermon because what God wants to manifest through you is still dependent upon your mindset for a miracle beyond the mess you had to go through. Because I have found out that you can live in mediocrity so long. You can live with disability for so long. You can live in poverty for so long that you get used to not hoping. You get used to not dreaming. And you get used to not wishing for greater. But thank God that although this man was born blind, he survived blind, but he didn't want to stay blind. Uh, somebody help me preach. Uh, he demonstrated that he still wanted what God had for him. And I ain't preaching to everybody in here. I ain't trying to make everybody shout but if you still want what God has for you uh, why don't you look at somebody and tell them after all I've been through yes I still want what God has for me uh, all the hell uh, all the heartaches uh, all the heartbreaks uh, all the disappointments all the breakups uh, all the lonely nights uh, all the times uh, where God didn't show up for me uh, I'm standing here on the precipice of 2023 uh, saying God I still want uh, whatever you have for me uh, can I preach like I feel it and if you still want uh, what God has for you uh, then you must be willing uh, to exercise your trust in the Lord then look at somebody and tell them whatever you do you keep trusting in the Lord you made it this far trusting him don't stop trusting him now. That, that's what verses 6 and 7 says. The Bible says when Jesus had said these things, listen, he spat on the ground and he made clay with the saliva. And then he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And then he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. And here's the good part. So he went and he washed. And he came back sick. Now, now church, in this moment, the man could have asked Jesus, did you just put your spit and dirt together to make what you call miracle mud? He could have asked, why would you put your spit and your dirt in my eyes? And now you have the nerve to tell me to go and wash after you're the one who put this on me in the first place. 
After all, to, 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 to add insult to injury, Jesus said, go your way. And Bartimaeus received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. And there were other blind people that Jesus laid his hands on and they received their sight. Subsequently, everybody's process is different. Come on, look at somebody beside you and tell them everybody's process is different. You, you ain't going to get it the same way I get it. You, you're not going to praise them and it's just going to fall in your lap. Sometimes it happens for others quicker than it does for you. Sometimes you got to watch everybody else before God gets to your doorstep. But that's why Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. If you just keep on praising him, if you just keep on serving him, after a while it's going to be your time, it's going to be your turn. But what I love about this brother church is that he did not let his process derail his success and in 2023 he did he we've got to be determined not to complain in 2023 we got to be determined not to compare ourselves to everybody else in 2023 we got to stop criticizing everything God is doing in our lives and learn how to just be obedient Learn how to be submissive and learn how to be grateful and say, any way you bless me, Lord, I will be satisfied. And God sent me here tonight to tell you that this next level of blessing is going to require of you to not take yourself so seriously. Because some of you might be thinking that the spit and the dirt was unnecessary and that the spit and the dirt was disgusting. But at the end of the day, that's all you and I are made of. We are made of dirt and God speaking over the dirt to make us in his image. And we've been dirty ever since. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him you're, you're just dressed up dirt. I don't care about your red bottoms. I don't care about your perfume, your baccarat. I don't care about that hair you got on your head. I don't care about your lace front. All of us in here are just just dressed up dirt and you got to get over yourself so God can bless you yes help me preach Holy Ghost let people laugh at you let people talk about you let people make fun of you but when God gets through with you you shall come forth blessed somebody shout I'm going to come forth renewed I'm going to come forth healed and I'm going to come forth on a new level I feel like preaching in this church tonight. Uh, slap by with your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're going to get what God has for you, you've got to exercise your trust in the Lord. But then secondly, you've got to embrace your testimony. Somebody shout, I have a testimony. Come on, somebody shout, I have a testimony. Verse 8 and 9 says, Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? They, they didn't just harp on his blindness, but they said he was a beggar as well. And some folks said, This is he. And other folks said, I think that's him. But, but he said, let me end all of it and tell you, I am the one. That they were all trying to figure out if this was the same person that they had seen blind all his life. They never expected that he would ever become anything more than what he had always been. And can I tell you, people in your life will always categorize you. They will always compartmentalize you. And they will always condemn you to being what their minds can comprehend and what their minds can control. But thank God tonight that he did didn't allow his past to diminish his promise. That's why he spoke up for himself and he said, I'm, I'm the one. Yes, I, I was blind, but now I see. And you know why I love this church? Because he did not try to hide who he was and what he used to be. Some years ago, my pastor... 
God rest his soul used to tell me he said Dante you have come from a long way but make sure you never tell people where you really came from he said don't tell people what you used to do because it ain't none of their business he said just thank God for where God brought you from and keep your business to yourself because some people in the church will judge you not for where you are but for where you used to be but can I tell you southern something in me just could not be silent about the grace of God in my life something in me could not be silent about the glory of God in my life you see I got a testimony I'm the one that was sick but he healed me I'm the one that was bound but he delivered me I'm the one that was lost but he found me I'm the one that was down but he lifted me and is there anybody in here tonight that can testify you ain't always been where you are you used to be at the bar drinking all the cutty sock you could drink you used to smoke all the weed and bip all the dope and have all the one night stands but is there anybody here that says I ain't ashamed of where God brought me from I'm not ashamed of the neighborhood I grew up in I'm not ashamed of the roaches and the mice that crawled in my house I'm not ashamed that I used to eat welfare cheese I'm not ashamed that I grew up on spam is there anybody here that says I'm not ashamed that we had hand-me-downs I had to wear my big brother clothes and my big sister's dress but here I am today God made a way for me God opened the door for me God built a bridge for me and if God could do it for me I know doggone well he can do it for you let's go church look at somebody and say neighbor it is no secret what God can do what he's done for me he can do it for you too can I preach like I feel it good night church may the Lord bless all of y'all real real good but I came to serve notice on the devil that I still want everything that God has for me and if it means I gotta trust in the Lord I'll trust him until I die if it means I gotta testify I don't care who knows where I come from the Lord has been so good to me I cannot tell it all good night church but look at your neighbor and say neighbor exclaim your truth come on help me preach exclaim your truth I'm a Bible preacher I'm sorry if I'm boring you but I gotta preach what the Bible says somebody shall say what it says I feel like preaching somebody shall say what it says therefore they said to him how were your eyes open and he answered and said a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes told me to wash I went and washed and I came back seeing like I never saw before now court proof is one thing for him to tell his testimony but it's another thing to tell the truth about who gave him his sight because leaders back then didn't like Jesus they didn't want Jesus they tried to deny his authority and his power and even today when I go and pray in some political places they don't want me to pray in the name of Jesus because it might be offensive to other people 
people's religions. But thank God that he didn't allow their preference to devalue the power of God in his life. Tony, he said, all I know is a man named Jesus did this for me. And when you ask me, how did I make it this far? If you ask me, how did I get through the hell I went through? If you ask me, how I made it through 2022? My answer is, oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me whole. His blood has kept me safe. His blood has healed my body. His blood has restored my vision. His blood has renewed my mind. I need everybody in this house to shout, God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. God did this. God did it. These shoes on my feet. God did it. These clothes on my back. God did it. This strength in my body. God did it. This joy in my soul. God did it. And guess what? If he did it, he'll do it again. a long, thank you Sam Cook, it's been a long time coming, but I know that I know that I know that I know a change, a change, a change will come. Lift up your hands, throw back your head, and shout, I want it, I want it. 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 Yeah! Praise him like you want it. Shout like you want it. Holler like you want it. Dance like you want it. Yeah! want everything that God has for me. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep serving them. I'm going to preach in season. I'm going to preach out of season. I'm going to preach when y'all shout. And I'm going to preach when you're quiet. I'm going to love the Lord even when I can't stand myself. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on trusting. I'm going to keep on testifying. And after a while, and by and by, God's going to breathe on my situation. God's going to give me what I never thought could actually happen in my life. He's going to manifest it in you, for you, and through you for somebody else. Everything God does through Southern in this community, he's going to make the devil a liar. He's going to show the world that the church is not just where we come to shout, 
but that the church can transform itself and the community into the kingdom of God. The power of God has to let the darkness do what it's going to do so that he can show himself mighty and he can show himself strong. And your prayer today ought to be, Lord, manifest your works in me. You've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church, where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor. If you desire to purchase a copy of this week's broadcast or any of our other media treasures, please call our media ministry at 410-732-8566. Thank you so much for our first spoken word, Bishop Hickman and Archbishop. It's so good to have you with us again. Now, February, something special is happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have responded to the clarion call on my spirit that the Lord has placed there to call for senior leaders in every level of the church. That is in the nuclear church, the marketplace, which consists of, of course, business, arts sure. and entertainment, media, media. <laughs> media. Yeah. to come and for a time of prayer and supplication and let's hear what the Lord has to say to us as those who lead leaders. We're influencers yeah. and those who lead have to lead from the front, which means somebody is following us. Yeah. Where are we leading them to? What are we seeing? What are we hearing? I'm hoping that in this session on February the 7th through the 9th, uh -huh. as leaders, we can hear something that the Lord has to say to us since the move of God, the place where God is, so that we can lead more effectively. What are you hearing in your spirit as it relates to everything that has transpired over the last couple of years? Great question. Um, the pandemic has taken its toll on all of us in terms of our energy, yeah. um, our visions, uh, we've had to revise our methodologies. Mm -hmm. Our strategies have had to change. We have ministered to the pain and hurt of others who've lost loved ones. Uh, churches have lost members, members that we won't see anymore. And churches have lost buildings. Buildings, absolutely. Yes. Just this week I had that conversation. Yeah. Um, and that has taken its toll on leadership. Yeah. And, it's not, and it's just not the nuclear church. Right. Every ever part of industry is, is suffering some of the same and things. And society, you know, you, you talk about Absolutely. the corporate world. Yes, as, sir. As experience the same. We've all been challenged we to rethink yes. our approach to what we do Absolutely. as a result of what we've been through. Absolutely. But my, my question became who, who influences the influencers? Who, yeah. who prophesies to the prophet? Yeah, yeah. Who tells the apostle uh, what he should be doing, who speaks into the life of these leaders. And, and also stand in agreement absolutely, in a without season a doubt, of seeking. Particularly when they're not sure where they are. Right. Absolutely. Right, we, right. We've, got, we've got to be there for one another. We're, we're our brother's keeper. Right. We really are. What comes to mind is Elijah when he came up out of, uh, 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 of hiding. Yeah. He thought he was all by himself. Absolutely. And he discovered that there were others who <laughs> others. shared the same concerns that he had. And even coming right. out of this pandemic, there's the tendency for many to feel like you're all by yourself. Absolutely, and we're not, we're not. Uh, there's such a commonality to what we're all experiencing, but somewhere along the line, I believe that if we get together uh, and, and pray, seek the face of the Lord, hear from the Lord prophetically, spend some time before the Lord Building altars, yes. building altars of fire. Altars of fire, altars I love that fire. title. Absolutely, because of course the altar that we're building these days are not manual or, or physical altars, it's the altar of our heart. Re, re, getting God to reignite our hearts again. Yeah. Because most of us and many of us have really lost a little of our fervor. We've become discouraged, we've become anxious, uh, a little, not quite as sure as we used to be, yeah. but I believe that's the will of the Lord for us to reignite the fire. And be anxious for nothing. It's ironic that the uh, character Elijah comes to mind because again, as you were speaking, I was thinking about the altar of fire Absol you know, that provided. Me. That's that my base text. First, see, see. first Kings chapter 18. Now, I didn't tell you that. that you didn't tell me flesh that. Flesh and blood that, that, didn't reveal that to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. So, so, yeah. so, so, and, and, and in the midst of that, yeah. 
God showed up. Absolutely. Let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Yes, and good. I believe there's something this season we need to hear as we move into a dimension we have not been into before. And I'm hearing some key things. I believe we're entering into a season where we're going to experience like never before the reign of God. I agree. The reign of God. I totally that, agree. That speaks of his kingdom. Yeah. And his kingdom is not just a nuclear church. No, it's no. media where you work. It's arts and entertainment yeah. where all this week uh, we've been talking about recently the Demar uh, situation. That's 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 Correct. sports. Right. Yeah, that all that's on all of our minds. We're talking and about yet the Russia. strategic impact absolutely that it has had on the masses. That's exactly right. You know exactly right. And and that doesn't leave us quickly. So somewhere along the line, if I'm not energized properly. I'm going to uh, rob you of what you're supposed to be getting from me. And that's what I'm, my concern is about senior leaders. Are we maximizing that's good. who we are to others because we ourselves have gone unreplenished? You know, there's some, there is some consistency there with what... Uh, I came into the year, and I've been sharing this ever since the first of the year, I came into the year with this word in my spirit. It just stayed in my spirit, and the word was potential. Potential, uh, yeah. And I prayed on, and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that God was uh, entering us into a season of potential. He reminded us of Ecclesiastes, where there's a time and a season for everything. Everything, yeah. And we have just gone through the cyclical order where we've gone through a season of problems, yep, absolutely, and challenges. That's right. And yeah. usually that's followed. That's right. By the pendulum going the other way. Uh -huh. But Psalms one says you've got to be positioned by the rivers of water. Oh, that's good. Absolutely so. And so I, I hear yeah. what you're saying is the yeah. positioning. Absolutely, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I'm hoping this will be a strategic setting where uh, key leaders, senior leaders can be vulnerable and open yeah. and transparent. not transparent yeah. and not feel as if they, uh, what they may share, how they may feel, if they're crying on the altar, that's a good thing, but yes. they, they, nobody's going to criticize that. Right. That's what we come for. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm really putting the word out there. If you're a senior leader in whatever mountain you serve in, this is a safe place. Because many times that's what leaders need is, is a safe place. Real this, quick, tell us where it's going to be at. At Kingdom Worship Center at 6419 York Road, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, 21212. Right at, Diagonal from channel two. All right. Yeah. I can look right out the window. You sure can. <laughs> Listen, I'm looking now and I see our second spoken word is coming up from someone that you know, uh, Dr. Kenneth Robinson oh, yeah. over at Dream Life Worship Center. He's got our second word. And then, of course, we'll be back with the uh, Archbishop to close out right here on Grace and Glory. First Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 19 through 27. I'm reading from the NLT. Okay, so Elijah went and found Elisha, the son of Jephthah, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12 team. Elisha went over to him and threw his cloak, or another word for cloak, there is his mantle, across his shoulders and then walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there and ran at the Elijah and said to him, first let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye and then I will go with you. And Elijah replied, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to boil, to build a fire, to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with, he, with Elijah as his assistant. I'll go to Psalms, if you will, 92 and verses 9. Verse 9 says, your enemies, Lord, will surely perish. Glory to God. All evildoers will be scattered. I'm praying this year that every that the anointing on your life will dispel and put away everybody that doesn't belong in your life and everybody who's supposed to be in your life in 2023 God is going to attract it by the anointing amen but you have made me as strong as a wild ox you have anointed me 
with the finest, or your Bible says you have anointed me with fresh oil. How many are ready to be anointed with fresh oil this year? Not the stale oil, not, not last year's oil. Come on, say amen. Not old methodologies and strategies. No, God is going to anoint you with fresh oil for 2023. How many received that already? So my subject of this morning, I'm talking from the theme, the ox anointing your year to break loose. Come on, prophesy that to somebody. Tell them it's your year to break loose. <laughs> All right, all right, you may be seated in his presence. Uh, my assignment, my assignment was revealed to me even more clearly in 2012 when the Holy Spirit in the darkest season of my life said, I'm telling you, I'm charging you to tell my people to dream again and restore them back to their original assignments in life. I took that. I understood what he was saying. And so much of my teaching you've already probably noticed has a lot to do with your assignment. It's a lot to do with why you are here. You know, that's just part of what you probably need to hear as a believer, but it's a big part. Because many of you uh, have been through much frustration in your life. And I taught this in Dallas a few weeks ago, how to deal with the spirit of frustration. Frustration comes uh, to you when you are not fulfilling your purpose and assignment in the earth. It's not just because you don't get the promotion or get the job or a relationship goes sour. You can have all that happen and yet not experience deep frustration. Frustrating and frustration comes when we don't fulfill our God-given assignment. And so there are many of you that the Lord has allowed in 2022 a, a holy frustration. Where even though you may even have a comfortable life, you don't have a comfortable spirit. Your soul has been agitated. Because of the assignment that the call that is on your life. Now, this is very powerful in this passage because I love this because here we see in this scripture how God uh, calls us to assignments. Many people are saved. He saves you for life, but he calls you to serve. And so after being in the body of Christ for so long and, and, and ministering to people for many, many years, I found out that getting saved is not always the problem. Once they get, the challenge they have is answering their call. How many will say, Dr. Ken, I want clarity for my life. Much of your frustration comes because of not being clear. Your call is bigger than you. Your call is bigger than your needs. Your call is for the people that you have been, up, been put on the earth for. Your, your call is for the people who will never make it if you don't show up. And many of you are intimidated about your call because it costs much. Not just uh, money. Money is one thing. It will cost you a lot of money. But it, it, it will cost your life. That's why Jesus said... Uh, if you're going to find your life, you got to lose it. It's like, like a dichotomy. I mean, it, I mean it's, it's a paradox. How are you going to lose your life and then find it? What he was trying to show you and I is that probably the life that you thought you were supposed to live and, 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 and be participating is going to be shifted when you're in me to the life that I have ordained for you before the foundation of the world. And so in 2023, a holy shift is going to take place in your life. It's a good one. 
It's a good one because you have had visions, you have had dreams, and some of you has even put, been as far as putting it down on paper. But can I tell you that God is about to bring you into something that you never ever imagined yourself doing. It's just that powerful. And so in this text in, in, in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, the Bible says the prophet Elijah, uh, he's literally, he, he's, he's coming out of a season of frustration because he thinks he's the only one out there doing something. That's a dangerous place to be, to think you're the only one holy, you're the only one anointed, you're the only one that's in line with God. And he felt like the whole world they, they have forsaken them, all the prophets, and he was running from Jezebel. And he got discouraged. He got frustrated because that spirit of Jezebel will help you get into frustration. And so there he is, and God says, okay, man, all right, here's what you got to do. Because one of the quickest ways God gets you out of frustration is giving you a new assignment. You will win against and over your enemies in 2023. I don't care what has come against you. So he's walking, and there he notices a young man who's behind 12 oxen or 12 pairs of oxen. He is the 12th one. I want you to just get a vision of this. Oxen were big, huge animals. He's the 12th one. Behind. And why is he the 12th? Why did Elisha look at him and he throws his coat on him? Because 12 is the number of government. And at that moment, Elisha's life shifted. It changed. He says, now you will be my assistant. Now, there's a couple of reasons why God chose him. I want you to get this because the first thing is that the anointing in the kingdom comes through relationship, not titles. Denominations focus on doctrine. Some of you came out of denominational churches. It was all about the doctrine. And as soon as somebody fell out with you concerning doctrine, that was it. They cut you off. But real kingdom is built on relationships. The anointing comes with proximity. When you want to receive and walk in an anointing, then you have to find someone who's carrying the anointing. And you connect with them. And I'm not talking about, when I say proximity, I'm not talking about you have to be close and go out everywhere with them every weekend. That's impossible. But in 2023, you do need someone to coach you to the next level. It could be a pastor, it could be a man, but someone has carrying the oil on their life to help you go to the next level. These mantles are divine assignments. And some of these mantles that are coming on you in 2023, you're going to get it because your parents missed it. Your grandparents didn't do it. And you will do it. Pathways ready for you to get on it. Ready for you to just step into it. And all the provision and all the connections and everything you need to do what you can call to do is about to happen. Elisha, you got to stay next to me because what I'm carrying is about to come on you. And I asked the Lord, why did you choose Elisha? He said, because he understood something that the others didn't understand. He understood the nature of an ox. He understood something because God teaches you even through nature about himself. That's why Solomon was such a wise man. Solomon studied all the animals. You can learn something from animals. Proverbs talks about learning from the ant how to prosper. Doesn't need a self-motivator, a commander. The ant just gets up and does what it does. You can learn things. You don't, watch, you don't worship nature, but you learn some things through nature. And so Elisha knew something about an ox. The ox was the strongest, most dependable animal that you can have when you were harvesting. 2023 is a year of great harvest for you. Harvest spiritually, harvest in ministry, harvest for your family. And so, watch this, Elijah, Elijah knew that in order to have great harvest, if you had an ox, you can get a whole lot done in a short amount of time. An ox did what 20 men would take hours to do, an ox did it in a moment of time. Those who, who had ox were considered wealthy. 
They were wealthy because they were able to move in service and accomplish things in their fields that others were not able to accomplish in their field. Why? Because the ox was strong. The ox was actually also an intelligent animal because it had the ability to see far ahead. And so when you had an ox, you had vision. You had the ability to go why, to see way down the road. And you didn't, know, you didn't just have the ability, but you were able to move regardless of what was in your way. The ox was a persistent animal. It had the ability to endure, to persist. And stop saying you believe in God for things if you have no persistence. Because the moment you say, I dream, the moment you say, I trust God, you can best believe everything that could possibly come against you will come against you. But God builds patience through trials, through problems, through troubles. He teaches you how to be persistent. He teaches you how to take a licking and keep ticking. Is there anybody here who has taken a licking in their ministry, in their business, but they kept on moving? Why? Because God teaches us persistence like an ox a ox just keeps moving <laughs> you can't stop them glory to God and I'm here to prophesy to you in 2023 you will be unstoppable there's an anointing that can come on you that can move a whole lot in a short amount of time some of you need to move things quickly. You ain't got six months. My, I'm prophesying to you that in the next 90 days, you're going to accomplish what it took 20 years in the past. Oh, why? Because the ox anointing can carry much in a short amount of time. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I prophesy to you that you will have lots and large sums of money in a short amount of time. Poor people want to get paid by the hour, but wealthy people get paid by results. I ain't just talking wealthy in money. I'm talking wealthy in influence. If when you're wealthy, you say, don't get paid me because I punched the clock, but pay me because I can get the job done. Pay me because I know how to fulfill an assignment. Pay me because if you call on me, I know how to answer. You understand the difference in the mentality of an ox? Many of you are going to pioneer things in 2023 you're going to break through things that have held your family in restraint for years and generations you will be the one who will break it it's a protecting anointing and that's why i read in psalms where david says let's look at that psalms go back to that look at that in psalms verse 9 your enemies lord will surely perish all evildoers will be scattered I'm, I'm praying that God delivers you from stupid people. I know you don't like that language, but it's in the Bible. You need to be free of people who have the wrong agenda in your life, who are in, okay, read your Bible if you don't think it's true. You need to be free of people who are wasting your time, wasting your energy, wasting your money, wasting your friendship, wasting your intimacy, wasting your wisdom, wasting your intelligence, wasting everything that you pour your life into. I'm praying you get delivered from people who mean your life no good the bible calls them evil doers they could be nice in the past but they shifted on you they shifted on you because you decided that you're going to take your family and life to another level. And you got to understand the moment you shift in your mind and you said, I'm going to another level. I'm going to elevate my life and family. You're going to always have people who remember the old you that are going to try to remind you of where you were. But I'm telling you, this is your year. You are busting through all of that. Be quiet. Because David says here that... He will anoint my horn like the unicorn or like a wild ox. A wild ox is an ox that cannot be contained. What God is releasing in you cannot be contained. What are the things?
thing that's so great about an ox is that an ox can be taught. That's why it's, 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 they say it's almost equivalent to a dog because you can literally teach an ox. As strong as they are, you can still teach them. Some of y'all need a teachable anointing. Can't nobody tell you nothing. See, this generation wants to be taught but don't want to be told nothing. But then there were oxes that were so wild and they were wild because they could not be contained where they were for a reason because they needed that ox to tear up some things that could not be broken before so David says God you're going to anoint me my horn my strip like a wild ox which says to you and I today watch this that God is going to put something on your family that's going to break all the restraints all the generational curses that have held your family back. I see sicknesses broken. Some of y'all have family members who died of diabetes, not you. You have family members who died of cancer, not you. You have family members who have died with all kinds of sicknesses. It has been a restraint and you walk around with that fear and you say, am I next? But when this ox anointing comes over you, you will not be stopped. You will break out from every sickness. Every disease that has held your family captive, shall is going to anoint me like the ox. The enemy has spent all his effort and time trying to keep you hidden. Not the you you show us in church. Not the you you show your friends on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Not that you. The real you. The dreamer in you. The millionaire in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. The executive in you, the franchise owner in you, the great parent, the great husband. Come on, somebody. That's the one that's coming forth. He has spent all his effort and time trying to keep you hidden so you never discover who you were called to be. He has tried to keep you in dysfunction so you never uncover the anointing and message you were created to deliver. He has seen the voice you were born with and has spared no effort to make sure you live muzzled and caged up your whole life. He has used religion to reject you and keep you from having any influence. He has used people that should have been championing you to wound you so you would never try to rise up ever again. The hidden ones are now emerging. I prophesy side to you that the anointing is coming on you you and your family is a fresh oil that I can get results that bring your name glory somebody shout yes hope you return to watch again visit www.dreamlifewc.com welcome back hope you've enjoyed the program and Archbishop I've enjoyed having you with us and of course the wonderful information that you're sharing. Now, I plan on, I'm planning on partaking in some of this. Well, I just need you to reiterate the information for us. Well, that's easy to do on February the 7th, 8th, and 9th. That's a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, three times a day, six in the morning, 12 noon, and seven in the evening. We're gathering senior leaders together for prayer, prophetic uh, words, and proclamations, time of meditation, contemplation, to feed those who feed others. Why do you feel uh, the Holy Spirit has placed that upon your heart for this season? That's a great question. The pandemic has played its role in all of our lives in terms of what it's done to us, in terms of our uh, psyche, where we are in, in, in energy, where we are in vision. And, and these leaders have poured into others, but very few leaders get poured into. Every now and then we have to come aside to be replenished. To be I, I thoroughly agree. That's why I said I'm going to be there. Now, listen, if anyone wants to connect with you, follow you, or get more information, how can they? Eventbrite. They can go on Eventbrite. We're there as Ralph L. Dennis Ministries, uh, and it's called Fire on the Altar. Uh -huh. uh, they can certainly register Eventbrite, or they can call the office at 410-377-3500. Archbishop, it's good to see you again, as always. Always good Much to see love. you. Bless continue you, Continue to pray for you, and I'll see you in February, okay? Uh -huh. We'll see you next week. Until then, continue to walk in His grace and live in His glory. We look forward to connecting with you right here on Grace and Glory next week.